Hello, hello everyone. How's it going? I hope you guys can hear me okay. I know it's kind of late going live, but it's been a crazy day. I'm actually at the salon. I just got my hair done. I hope you guys like it. Look at my new color. I love it. I love it. Um, and I'm actually still at the salon because uh, I was like, you know what? I have to get online for a few minutes and talk to my family and friends. I can't go home. So if you can hear me and you're watching, just put yes in the chat. Let me know that you can still hear me okay. You might hear a little bit of background noise. It's because the hair dryers are going on the other side. All right. So, all right. I just wanted to make sure you guys can hear me. Hi, guys. How's it going? Okay. So let me. Oh, my, this is my sis, Tanili. How are you doing, Tanili? Okay. So this is what I wanted to talk about today. So today's topic is about how you really want something really bad. You go after it, but you keep failing time after time after time. Do you quit and finish it or do you keep going? Well, I can tell you that's how it was for us when we wanted to start a family. Um, we had tried to start a family right in 2001 time frame. You know, we had 9-11 kind of shook us. It was like, you know, life is too precious. Then I told you my mom passed away like eight months later. And I was like, I really want, want to have a family. So Tom and I tried on our own for about two years, from 2001 to 2003, and it wasn't working. Nothing was happening. I can tell you, we've been trying, okay? <laughs> so, but it wasn't working. One of the issues is because I had a difficult travel schedule. I was traveling Monday through Thursday, and I was really only home Fridays to Sundays, right? Or Friday through Monday morning. So finally, in 2004, uh, I decided to seek professional help, went to a specialist, a fertility specialist, and based on our situation they said the best thing for us to do is to have IVF which is in vitro fertilization now a lot of people may have heard the term but you don't know what it really means it means they actually extract the egg from me get it with Tillman right so that way it's actually fertilized outside of my body and then they have to put the embryo into my body into the uterus okay so um, it's, you know, it sounds really simple, but it's definitely not. It's a complicated process and it takes a lot to actually mentally be ready to do it. And then physically your body has to be ready to do it as well. So I didn't want to lose hope. I was like, okay, yes, we could do it. I was all gung-ho. You guys know me. I have really good energy, right? So before you start the process though, you have to go through counseling. It's like pre, they call it like pre-cycle counseling. So we had to go to a session just to learn about what's going to happen and understand that you're going to have some stressful times. Things may not work out. It may not always work, but you have to keep going, right? Then you have to have the insurance for it, or hopefully you have insurance. Some people have to pay cash because back in 2004, it wasn't really covered as much. But I'm happy to say we had pretty good insurance. It covered most everything, but except the medication. The medication was hundreds of dollars a month that I had to pay out of pocket. You had to take a bunch of blood tests and then we also had to have hormone treatments so not only was i taking three to four pills a day right because i was trying to get the ovulation process going and the goal was to have your body um stimulate as many eggs as possible for the extraction extraction but the other part guys was i had to inject needles into my butt i'm talking about the needles were like this big and so tillman had to learn how to do it because obviously I can't do it as much as, as someone who's not me doing it, right? But how about when I was traveling? You know, I had to have a really good friend, someone who I'm very close to. She had to give me the shots when I was traveling for work. So, you know, that's crazy. And all of this in order for us to just get pregnant, okay? So, um... After that process, a few days go by, they let you know exactly when to come in to check when your hormones are ready, when it's time to extract uh, the eggs from your body. So let me tell you the process. The first time, uh, everything went well. I actually got uh, uh, the embryos took. I was pregnant, I had a positive pregnancy test the first time, right? And then after about two months, unfortunately, I went in for a checkup and they checked me and they're like, uh, we need to go to emergency surgery. You have an ectopic pregnancy. And I was like, uh, what, what does that mean? Well, that means that the baby actually was stuck in the fallopian tube. You can't have a baby attached to the fallopian tube. So I had to have emergency surgery because if it burst, I could potentially have died. So that was devastating. That was our first time. 
So we waited a few more months and we did it again for the second time. This time, you know, you go through the process. I'm taking the hormones, I'm getting the shots, I'm doing everything they told me, I'm getting the blood test. The second time I go in, and for some reason, my body was retaining all the fluid from the medication. I literally had a two fluid ounce bottle of Pepsi. Think about how big a two liter bottle is that you drink for a whole family. That's how much extra fluid was in my stomach area. So they had to extract that and they said, listen, we can't do the procedure because we had this complication. So I remember this, I was like, I, I'm, maybe this isn't for me. I can't do this. I remember uh, Tillman was, uh, Tillman had to calm me down because I was like, man, this is the second time. What's going on? Maybe this is a sign. But Tillman being the rock that he is for me, he was like, nope, let's just take a break and we'll try again, right? So the third time, this is the third time I'm going through IVF now, right? We waited about six months, started again, taking the hormones, getting the shots, traveling, trying not to be stressed, trying not to think about it. Well, it worked. So, you know, this is the third time the embryos took. I got a positive pregnancy test, right? Um, I was about eight weeks and I went in for a checkup and they checked me and they were like, um, unfortunately, we don't see a heartbeat and it looks like you had a miscarriage. And I was like, oh, I was just devastated. And not only did that happen, but I also had to have a procedure. It's called a DNC where they actually had to dilate my uterus and you know scrape it. It was it was horrible. Okay, so that was the third time that they had to remove that stuff, right? Then we waited a year because I was like, you know what? I think I just need to take a break from this whole process, right? So I took a break, and then a year later we tried again. It was our fourth time trying. And you know what happens is when they extract the embryos, they don't just put in one. They put in maybe two to three because they may not stick. <laughs> they may not take, right? So I remember the doctor put in three. And this was in September of 2005. And then in October, when we went back to check the pregnancy test, it was positive. And they're like, okay, let's see what happened. And when they did the ultrasound, they saw two embryos. That's my Aiden and Layla in there. And I was like, oh God, please give me what we can handle because the doctor was like, you know, you could have three. And I was like, well, God's only gonna give me what I can handle. And I was so happy that we had two. <laughs> Cause I was like, we only got two hands ourselves. I don't know what we would do with a third, right? Um, and shout out to you guys who actually do have more than two, <laughs> okay? But I was just so grateful and so ecstatic that we had two. And I remember that Thanksgiving in 2006, uh, I remember Tillman's parents came over, uh, his mom came over. I remember Eric and Jenny, my, my brother-in-law and his wife were there and we were able to give them the big news, my dad, and we had the picture of the ultrasound that we showed them and they were like so ecstatic. I was so happy. And what was cool about it was that I think my brother-in-law, he was like, oh man, okay, I think we better start trying too because we want our kids to be close in age as well, <laughs> right? So the fourth time was the charm. But I say all that to say is you cannot give up on what you want. We really wanted to have a family. We could have been like, oh, maybe it's just meant to not meant to be and just give up. No, when you fail, you got to fail until you're successful. So keep going. And I thank God every day for Aiden and Layla. You'll hear more about how it still wasn't just a glorious day after all of that. There's so much more to tell, but we'll have to save that for another day. But I just want to let you guys know that you may look happy and jolly on the outside, but no, people never know what you're going through on the inside. And you don't have to tell the whole world, but I'm sharing this because maybe it'll help someone else who may be going through IVF. Maybe helping someone else who's going through fertility issues. I'd be happy to help and share and tell you my, my story in more detail, but I'm hoping that this can give someone some hope. So I want to thank you guys for watching, whether it's live or if it's a replay. If it's live or if you're live right now, thank you, Ladonia. Say hi. Say hi in the, in the chat. And if you are still going after your dreams, then come on. You guys can do this. Don't give up, all right? And uh, if you're watching the replay, put replay in the chat. Let's connect. That's what this is all about. I've been loving having these, these uh, daily uh, short conversations with you guys so you can get to know me I can get to know you a lot of you've been sharing a lot of great information a lot of our lives are similar 
that's the whole point of us doing these lives is really to share and show that the world may be huge, but we can still connect on a personal level through Facebook Live. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Have a great night and I'll check you guys tomorrow. Thanks.